Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis, the Rolls Royce of medical education. Today, we'll talk about the Malampati score or the Malampati classification for the oropharynx before endotracheal intubation. Malampati was an Indian born American anesthesiologist, and this score is extremely helpful if you want to be a good doctor, nurse, EMT, etc. This was part of the discussion of my long video called Airway Management and it's in my anesthesiology playlist. Please refer to that video to learn more about airway management. Let's go back to square one. Medicine is about ABCs, the airway, breathing and circulation. Hey Medicosis, I noticed a small mole on the patient's left toe. Oh, shut up. You first focus on the ABCs, airway, breathing and circulation. If you do not get your ABCs right first, the patient is gonna die while you keep arguing about the border irregularity of the freaking nevus. And here are the 10 commandments of airway management. This is good for surgery, it's good for emergency medicine, it's also good for anesthesia. Because a good rule is a good rule. It's not gonna become a bad rule just because you change departments in the freaking hospital. Rule number one, if the patient is conscious and speaking in a normal tone of voice, the airway is open as of this moment. This can change in the next second, so always be careful. If you have an expanding emphysema or hematoma, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, it can close the airway in the next minute. Thou shall secure the airway now, before it's too late, baby. Rule number three, if the Glasgow coma scale is less than eight, you shall secure the airway runner. Bah, bah, bah. Oh, shut up. Secure it now. If the patient's breathing is noisy or gurgly, gur, 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 this is not cool. You should intervene right away. Secure the airway now. What if I suspect that this patient has a cervical spine injury or atlantoaxial subluxation? Thou shall secure the airway now before addressing the cervical spine injury. And you have two options. The first option is hard. You can secure and fix the head and avoid hyperextension, and then you endotracheally intubate. This is for the pros. Or you can do the easier route, which is intubation over a fiber optic bronchoscope. The problem is this takes a lot of time. So if this is an emergency, fiber optic is not an option. Assuming that this is an emergency situation, Rule number six, location, location, location. I sound like a real estate agent. If you're outside the hospital, thou shall secure the airway via cricothyroidotomy or intubation. But if you are in the hospital in the emergency room, thou shall secure the airway via rapid induction and endotracheal intubation. What if the patient has some serious facial injury and this is interfering with my intubation capabilities? Thou shall tracheate or cricothyroidotomy cricothyroidate. Tracheate is tracheostomy, cricothyroidate is cricothyroidotomy. If your patient is younger than 12 and you cannot intubate, thou shall tracheate. Try to avoid cricothyroidotomy. Most doctors are reluctant to do this in young kids because their vocal cords, their larynx are still growing. Infants, in general, are problematic. Why? The tongue is relatively large, the epiglottis is floppy, and the larynx is more anterior. Where is the narrowest part of the larynx? It's below the vocal cords. Number 10. Pregnant women, in general, are difficult to intubate. Why? Gravid uterus is pushing the diaphragm upwards, decreasing the FRC. What the flip is the FRC? Functional residual capacity go to my pulmonology playlist because I have video about spirometry and the pulmonary function tests. The gravid uterus is pressing on the stomach, increasing the risk of aspiration. Oh, what's, what's aspiration? Aspiration is something that was not intended to go to the trachea, going into the trachea. Something could be from the mouth, it could be from the esophagus, from the stomach. When this happens to you while well, you're awake, this is happens, uh, let's say you are laughing while eating. <coughs> Why are you doing this? To prevent aspiration. Next, large breasts because of estrogen makes laryngoscopy more difficult. Also, there could be some airway edema. If you want to add commandment number 11, obesity is a risk factor. Obesity makes it difficult to intubate. So if the patient is morbidly obese, think of plan B before thinking of plan A. 
airway technique. Here is the deal. First, you go with mask ventilation. If you can maintain the patient mask ventilation, this is every anesthesiologist's dream come true. But unfortunately, it's sometimes it's not enough. Then you go to the next step. Next up is the tube. Of course, you have seen it before. The endotracheal tube. You intrude the tube through the mouth. It's called orotracheal or through the nose called nasotracheal and ends up in the trachea. And this is how you make the patient breathe artificially during the freaking surgery. Can I use a laryngoscope? You can use it. Can you use a stylet? Yup, if you need it. What if this is hard? This is a difficult patient, difficult to intubate. Now it's time to shift to other techniques. So we go from this to this to this. Try the fiber optic bronchoscope or the fiber optic endotracheal intubation. Okay, you can do it orally or nasally. And here is the unique thing about fiber optic. You can do it even when the patient is awake. And this luxury is not available for endotracheal intubation. The problem with fiber optic is that it takes a lot of time. And if you remember physics, fiber optic tubes depend on the character of light known as full reflection. This is how you get fast speed internet. If it's difficult to intubate the patient, you have other options such as retrograde tracheal intubation or blind nasotracheal intubation. Then you have supraglottic airway devices such as the famous LMA. Also you have the ETC and others. And then if the bleep hits the fan and I cannot get the tube from above, I get a pierce through the patient's skin. And this is cricothyroidotomy or tracheal jet ventilation. Which one is better? Most of the time it's the cricothyroidotomy. So I've told you about the genetic diseases that make your life difficult, such as Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, etc. Also, you have other diseases. Epiglottitis, we have talked about it before in my pulmonology playlist. Croup, Ludwig Angina, traumatic foreign body, obesity, goiter, or any mass, by the way. Cervical spine injury, such as atlantoaxial subluxation, which happens in rheumatoid arthritis, among others. Fractured base of the skull or basilar skull fracture, angioedema, laryngeal edema, hematoma, tumors, masses, systemic sclerosis, etc. Hematicosis, is there a way to try to guess and predict if this patient is going to be easy to intubate or difficult to intubate? Sure, we have two systems of classification. The first system is called malampati classification. What are we looking for? We're looking here. Look at this. This is the oropharynx. You're looking at the oropharyngeal opening. In class one, it is wide open, baby. Like when the anesthesiologist sees Malampati class one, the anesthesiologist is going to leave the patient, go to another room, and literally start dancing. Yay! I got class one! Then class two, it's getting narrower. Class three, even narrower. Class four, you can't even see it. That's not good. The second system of classification is called mccormick lehane system or score or classification. And we'll talk about mccormick lehane in the next video. Or you can refer to my airway management video in my anesthesiology playlist for more detail. And this is the most important slide in the entire stinking lecture. Remember that vocal cord dysfunction will give you this shape on flow volume loops. Watch my pulmonology playlist, please. Don't forget that upper airway obstruction can give you changes on the flow volume loops. This is the shape of the loop if it's a fixed upper airway obstruction. If it's variable, extra thoracic airway obstruction is going to be like this. And this is, by the way, vocal cord dysfunction. Or it could be variable intrathoracic airway obstruction. For more on the flow volume loop, check out my pulmonology playlist. If you want an algorithm for difficult airway management, check out this website. If you like this video, you will adore my antihepatics course, available at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have a chemotherapy course, no pun intended. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.